What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the madness. Today we're going to be doing another Axe Effects tutorial, and today we're talking about the dynamic distortion block. I just did a video on the entire Fractal Patch 20.0 last week, where I did a bit of a demo and some first impressions of the block. But today we're going to be going through the meat and potatoes, telling you what each you know parameter does, maybe with a little bit more uh, detail to explanation. So if you've come here for that reason, you're here in the right place. But if you want to see more of a demo with me tinkering with sounds and just kind of going through it as a first look, you can go to my, uh, my Fractal Patch review video, which is just right above. So let's jump right in. Swish. So here we are with the Axe Edit up on the middle, me in the top right, and nothing here. So I'm not giving you notes today. Too bad. I know you wanted them, but I'm keeping them for myself. So, just working on the Mateus Asado branch. Let's get rid of this delay just for the sake of it. And let's add a brand new fresh dynamic distortion block in here. So, right off the bat, you'll see there's only one tab. And you'll notice that you have different knobs right here. There's really not much going on in this one. So there's a filter type. You got high shelf, low shelf, and peaking. So you can create bumps and valleys. Pretty, pretty basic filter stuff, right? Then you got frequency, Q, gain, all the stuff you tend to see on frequency filters. And then uh, clip shape, which is I'm um, going to tell you basically how much of the signal and how hard it's going to be clipping off that signal. The bias, considering drive tends to be amplifying a signal to the point of distortion. And distortion is really just the, it's literally distorting your signal. In fact, I'll bring it right up. Why not? So you got sine waves right here. Look at that. And then basically, what'll happen as you distortion, add distortion to it, you'll end up messing it up. See right here? This is actually a pretty decent picture. Um, let's zoom it in a little bit. Come on, get out of here. So you've got this sine wave, and then when it's clipped, the top of the, the, uh, the sine wave right here, and the bottom of the sine wave right here, is clipped. That's what they're talking about when you see this clip shape, medium, soft, hard. Generally, when it's just cut right off like this, that means hard distortion. So just a little bit of uh, you know signals theory for you. But you can recreate any sound with a limited number of sine waves to a very close representation. That's why these DSPs, like the Axe FX3, is extremely powerful in that way. Because the more DSPs and the more processing power you have, the more sine waves you can add together to recreate very complex signals. Now, when you've got a distortion and an amplifier and a cabinet and a drive and a compressor and all these different things added together, you're adding more complexity to the signal. So you need more processing power in order to recreate the signal adequately enough for our ears to be almost fooled into believing it is actually created by analog electronics. So with that said, you know, let's just kind of continue here. We don't need all that, you know, extra theory. What we're doing here is we're basically adjusting the gain depending on the frequencies that we make in this filter, which is what this distortion filter or this dynamic distortion is all about. So what we're doing is we're changing the frequency of the gain, you know, and we're changing how much gain and the how, uh, how quickly you know, our filter decides to filter out those specific frequencies. Higher Q, the more selective of the frequency that we're specifying it's going to be. The lower the Q, the wider the angle, right? So as you decrease this, it goes flat. And then if you increase it, it becomes more and more vertical and more unstable. See what you've got here is this, you've got this swing down before it jumps. And then up here, you'd have, a, you'd have the exact same thing. If I drop the gain, you'll see it. So... You know, you just got, you have to even it out. You can't always get very, very sharp selectivity. You can't have very sharp selectivity of frequency without a drawback of it giving you these little lips right here. It's just a, it's a byproduct of mathematics, really. So that's what we're going to be tinkering with. And that's what all these things do. But we're not done here. You know, I've told you what everything does. But let's just kind of give a little bit of a demo. 
you know, I've got this really ugly curve. This is gonna sound horrendous, but may as well listen to it to see what happens. Now, if we move the frequency around. Now, it'd be super cool if Fractal Audio gave us a, uh, you know, a little dot under here so we could add a modifier to this thing. That would be pretty dope because then you'd have like a filter sweeping distortion block that's also, you know, it'd be it'd be a cool distortion block. But they haven't given that a choice yet. I imagine they probably will in a future uh, in a future patch. So let's just uh, knock this cue down. Let's increase the gain. Let's uh, let's go give mid. Let's do mid boosts. Get rid of this drive. Let's do hard clipping. Increase the bias. Let's drop the drive down. Uh, I think I want to try out some mid cuts. Now, notice it's kind of opposite to what you expect, right? You know, you'd expect by having mid cuts, the mid would be dropped down. But what they're doing is they're cutting these frequencies more. Kind of just, I would assume, by the name. And now, if I were to say, you know what, let's just go negative 10 or negative 10. It's the same exact thing as mid boost. And I hear those mids are back confirms our suspicion that this thing actually looks different than what you would expect it to be doing. So it's cutting these at a negative 10, which negative negative makes positive mid boosts. I just find that kind of strange the way they kind of put that out there, but it is what it is. But really, kind of thinking with this. Now if you shift this thing back all the way, increase the Q, Drop the gain. Now you can see. Now you can kind of assume it's almost like. This is almost like a. Uh, the depth boost. So you can kind of create these things on your own if you want to. You don't need it to be a specifically, you know, any of these. You don't have to use any of these. You can use a flat. You know, create whatever filter you want. Drop the gain. You know shift the frequency you can you can make whatever style you want the flat is where you customize you can customize from any of these but you know they're presets for a reason so that's really the entirety of this block I hope you got a little bit out of this considering you know the theory and stuff it might bore some people you some people might find it fascinating I personally like it it's why I got into engineering it's why I'm doing this as my job pretty much I hope you guys do whatever floats your boat like and subscribe if you feel like I'm worth it, because you're worth it too. And uh, I'll catch y'all on the flippy floppy, all right? Ciao.